Hello everybody, happy Monday. Uh, today I am going to be reading a blog from July of 2018 and it is entitled Spit and My Life and uh, no synopsis so I'm just going to jump right in. Yesterday morning I was reading from the Daily Bread devotional and the scripture reading was out of Mark chapter 8 verses 22 through 26 which say they came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him he took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him Jesus asked do you see anything he looked up and said I see people they look like trees walking around once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Don't even go into the village. I've read this story and similar ones more times than I can count in my life, but I have never before stopped and thought about the spit. As I was reading that passage, I thought, Why did he have to use spit? That's actually kind of gross. Can you even imagine having someone spit on your eyes when you were only asking to have your blindness healed? As I continued reading, I thought, what's the spit in my life? When has God had to use something unpleasant or unfa unfavorable to take away my blindness? We ask God to heal us, change us, make us more like him, but then act shocked when he wants to use our trials, our rough patches, our hard seasons, our years of of unanswered prayers to do it. That's spit on our eyes. It's uncomfortable and we don't understand it. Everything within us cries out, why would you spit on me when I'm down, when I just want to be healed? Did you notice before the spitting takes place in this passage, it says he, Jesus, took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village? I love the picture in my mind of Jesus leading this blind man down a dusty, rocky path, taking him by the hand, maybe putting his arm, putting his arm around him to steady him. What might the conversation have been like as they walked? Did Jesus ask him about his life even though he already knew the number of hairs on his head? Did Jesus have to catch the blind man if he appeared to stumble on the path or throw out a watcher step there? What was going through the blind man's mind? Was he scared or filled with excitement at the possibility of being able to see? Did he know who Jesus was? Had he heard of all that Jesus was capable of? What would it feel like to hold Jesus' hand? Can you imagine holding such a powerful hand? And then out of nowhere, spit. Did Jesus tell him he was going to spit onto his eyes or did he just do it unannounced? How did the blind man react? These are the questions I think I'll want to ask when I get to heaven. Mostly because I know how I respond when spit falls onto my life. I complain, I question, I overanalyze what I'm doing wrong or what I need to be doing better. I so easily forget that my Jesus is walking beside me, leading me, steadying me, holding my hand. The power of the empty grave coursing down from his hand straight into mine. The roughness of his scars pressing against my palm reminds me that because he is already overcome, he is victorious, he is healing, he is freedom, and he has good things in store for me. He takes away my blindness to see beyond the spit, the trials, the hard days, to see his healing power at work in my life in ways I would have never expected. So that's my blog on spit. <laughs> Um, literal and figurative and um, so I think rereading this um, has reminded me of um, what I was thinking when when I read these verses was um, in the figurative sense you know what is the spit in my life what is God using to heal me of blindness um, the things that are um, unfavorable or unpleasant or uncomfortable. And, um, and you know, a couple things come to mind. Um, 
but you know all of it is as uncomfortable as it is all of it is intended to bring us closer to him and um in the situation of this story he, i mean this blind man would have had to have been very close in close proximity to jesus in order for this healing to happen and for him for jesus to be able to put his hands on him I mean, he had to be that close. And so in the figurative sense, um, that is how God is taking away my blindness today. Um, the things that are unpleasant and uncomfortable in my life, um, I can either let those continue to bring me, uh, to create distance between me and God, or, um, you know, with complaining, asking questions, overanalyzing all the things that I said in this blog, um, or I can just surrender those things and say, I don't understand, or this doesn't make sense, or, um, you know, give me clarity. Uh, what are you trying to teach me? Um, any of those things. And, um, and as we dialogue with God over these things that are painful and, and uncomfortable, um, then we're able to draw in closer. And that's really what takes away the blindness. Um, it's not any of these situations that we're facing. Um, it's, it's that closeness that we, that we have with God and, um, and that relationship as it grows deeper and as our relationship with him grows stronger, um, the light gets brighter. And I think, um, it's hard to be it's hard not to see when there's so much light around you. Um, so that is um, pretty much all I had to share for today. Um, if you want to comment on the video and just talk about, you know, maybe what the spit is in your life. Um, if you're needing prayer or you just want to share um, what God is doing in your life, um, I would love to hear that. And um, if you are struggling with unpleasant, unfavorable, uncomfortable uh, painful situations, um, definitely reach out and ask, ask for help, ask for, um, ask someone to pray for you, to talk with you, because whatever you're struggling with today, you do not have to go through it alone. And I hope everyone has a good rest of their Monday, and I will be back tomorrow with my blog entitled Filled Up and Poured Out, and it's, um, a blog that I wrote, I mean, basically what the title would make you think of, um, just allowing God to fill me up and pour me out to be used by him, um, to be able to really live abundantly from that place of being filled up and poured out. So that'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll be tomorrow's blog. And, um, I will be back then tomorrow to read that with you and hopefully um you know everyone has a good day i know i already said that but it doesn't hurt to say it again i will talk to you guys tomorrow bye bye